by the sweet will of Gurudev, but unfortunately without his presence. Till now, we will go on to search for quotes of Chaitanya Charit Amrita. In the sweet Sri Sri Radharas Sudanidi from Srila Prabhupada Ananda Saraswati. So we came up to verse number 98. And like always, it is mystically connected with what we spoke the last time, because we didn't came up to 98 last time, but we were speaking about the Upanishads who want to be gopis. There was a question from Raseshwari. I remember. So here it is written now. But first let us hear what is the verse, number 98. When will that vine named Sri Radha that adorns the crest of the Upanishads that always serves her beloved Brat Shamani, Krishna, with festivals of great constant passion, whose girlfriends are very eager to take her shelter so that they may become Govinda's girlfriends, who is the only Rasavati, the romantic, amorous girl, and whose worship is the attainment of the highest perfection. When will that wine named Sri Rata give me her love? So in this verse, we have already the connection to the Upanishads. And in the commentary of Shilananda Das Babaji, we are jumping now to that point. It's written, the highly intelligent Upanishads were amazed when they saw the unrivaled beauty of the gopis. So they faithfully performed penance, after which they took birth in Braj as gopis. This is described by the Puranas and the Upanishads. The Upanishads thus attained perfection by following in the footsteps of the gopis. And therefore, Sri Radha is called the wine that crowns all the Upanishads here. So, Radharani is the ground jewel, the quint essence of all gopis. And because the Upanishads, they also become gopis, that's why we can have this wonderful connection that Radharani is of course the ground jewel of all the Upanishads. A very logical uh, connection. So the Upanishads followed in the footsteps of the gopis while they worshipped the prince of Braj and later 
they took birth as gopis in Braj and could dance the rasa with Krishna there. And interesting in that connection is, without the mercy of Radha, this wouldn't be possible. We could also see it from that side that actually they were describing the glories of Radha hiddenly and that's why they got the mercy. If they wouldn't do like that, who knows? Who doesn't raise Radha will not be successful in these love affairs whatever they want. And we want to have the most intimate service to Radha. We want to follow Srila Prabhupada Saraswati, who is actually the mercy case, the biggest mercy case of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. can say, yes, Srila Raghunanda is also the biggest Yes, it's true, because it's not the material description. The biggest mercy case is Srila Prabhupada Saraswati, and the biggest mercy case is Srila Raghunanda Swami, in the same way. So, and we are also one of the biggest mercy cases in whole existence, because we got the possibility to get the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by the sweet mercy line, our lovely family, in which we got initiation by the mercy of Gurudev. So we are connected directly in this line up to Nityananda and Janavama. And we all know what that means. So what mercy cases we are. And we will follow the footsteps of that persons who got the direct mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So if anybody wants to comment, question something, share something with us, please do so. The next quote of Chaitanya Charit Amrita I found is in verse number 102. And the topic here is Sri Radha's artfully dancing glances. Sri Radha's glances show wonderful expertise in dancing to please the mind of King Cupid, who sits on his royal golden throne, her buttocks. She hangs a golden curtain of bashfulness over the dancing stage of her young body where she scattered handfuls of flowers in the form of her smile and where she uses her youthful charms as an introduction to Cupid's play. Commentary both during visions and after them, Sripad relishes a succession of Radha flavors. Sripad is the manifest form of Sriman Mahaprabhu's grace. So here it's written, Sripad is the manifest form of Sriman Mahaprabhu's grace. 
By doing bhajan himself, he is teaching the word expertise in bhajan. So that means he is our role model. We follow his footsteps. Mahaprabhu has given them the responsibility to teach bhajan to the world. Sriman Sanatan Goswami was very morose, so he wanted to commit suicide by throwing himself before the wheels of Lord Jagannath's chariot. But Mahaprabhu told him, now comes the quote, Chaitanya Charit Amitta Antya Lila Chapter 4 Tomara Sharira Amara Pradhana Sadhana Esarire Sadibo Ami Bahu Brayojana Bhakta Bhakti Krishna Prema Tatvera Nidhara Vaishnavera Kritya Ara Vaishnava Achara Krishna Bhakti Krishna Prema Seva Pravartana Lupta Tirta Udhara Ara Varakya Shikshana Esap Karma Ami Dehe Ghoribo Taha Chorite Chao Tumi Kemote Sahibo Your body is my main means through which I have many things to accomplish. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? He is already saying, I will accomplish a lot through your body, so you cannot throw away your body, because I will use it. It's not yours. You cannot decide. Through your body, I wish to preach the principles of the, devote, of the devotee, devotion itself, as well as love for Krishna and the duties and conduct of a Vaishnava. Now you wish to give up that body. How can I tolerate this? Thus, we have to learn expertise in bhajan from them. In meditation, one should see how Sripad in his kinkari rupa relishes Sri Rata's sweetness along with the flavors of his beloved's service. They are extraordinary kinkaris that never come down from the asana of a kinkari. Lalita, Vishaka and others occasionally act as heroines, but the kinkari's hearts are illuminated by the light emanating from Radha's two nails, whether in dreams, wakefulness or deep sleep. The true visions of their experiences are recorded with, within the Goswami's books. Vrindhavan's Rasa Sadakas are blessed by relishing all these sweet flavors in their books. So, we can hear, these are our role models we should follow. They got the mercy from Mahaprabhu and they actually are handing it down in the books like Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, like Vilap Kusumanjali, 
This is the mercy of Mahaprabhu handed down from them to us, showing us the way how we should perform our bhajan. So what a mercy. This is like a description. When you buy in the material world, you buy something, whatever, coffee, automatic machine, then you have a description how it works, what you should do, what you shouldn't. All this is nicely described, and if you follow, you will have a good coffee. <laughs> but if you don't, <laughs> well, maybe not so good. So here it's the description for us what to do to get this sweet flavor of Radharani's seva. This Manjari Bhav, this Kinkari Bhava. So if we follow, we can get it. Isn't that a great mercy for us? So if someone wants to have a commentar, commentary on this, sharing some feelings, questions, or if I said something wrong, then please correct me. So please share if you like, anytime. So the next quote I found is in verse number 103. I always say I found because, you know, my eyes are not perfect. Maybe I missed some. So if you find something which I didn't, please always invite it. Because it's not so easy. In Shishirada Rasa Sudanidi, it's a little bit more hidden, all these quotes. Some you can see very good, but others are slightly overlooked. So here we have the next quote in verse number 103. And this is about, May the unrivaled natural love festival of Radha and Madhava in which they astonish each other with the beauty of their young, enchanting, adolescent forms that carries waves of amazing cleverness in artful love play and where there is not even the slightest breach, reverence, offense or awe protect you all. That's a very nice description. Not even the slightest breach, reverence, offense or awe. So no God consciousness inside. No Aishwari above. It is also not preaching. It's just the sharing of feelings. It's a wonderful, loving offer. How clever is his form? when he attains adolescence. His emerald form resembles a youthful Cupid, which Brahma has created his different limbs. So which Brahma? 
has created his different limbs? How much nectar is showered over me when I see it? His red lips are softly smiling and the corners of his restless eyes destroy my moral principles. When I see his two knitted eyebrows, my heart breaks. Oh, mother, where was this playful hero? This love festival is also Tat Tat Keli Kala Vilas Lahari Chatuyam Ashchaya Bhu. Wave after wave of astonishing, artful and clever love pastimes. When this cleverness increases, the hero and heroine even forget their own identities and become as if one. This Prema Vilas Vivarta is one of the astonishing waves in this ocean of pastimes. Srila Ramananda Roy described this to Mahaprabhu, who covered his mouth out of great ecstasy. Jai Gurudev! Jai Shirade! Nice to see you! You look quite good, good condition. I'm like always. I am We just heard that Kinkaris never step down from that point. That's the point. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> that is the point. Burning in the fire. Now another argument. Fire and is a fire. Burning in the fire of material. The projection. Only can come from all of you, classic Vaishnavas. You are the product. <laughs> Gurudev, it's, it's so wonderful because all persons usually they speak in the mirror. In your case, it's also like that. You just see love everywhere because it's inside of you. And I just see problems because it's inside of me. So that's the difference. <laughs> you are helping us inspire. <laughs> you take pain for us. <laughs> you are more fortunate than me. You are giving, healing us by sharing reality of the divinity. I don't like dummy pictures, then I will close my picture. If they come, want to come, they have to come personal. I don't like dummy pictures, you see, in the Zooming class is better not to attend. And attend with the picture personal is not impersonal. How much you will want to practice impersonal relations? Crazy foolishness that you want to be impersonal with the personal thing is a crazy idea. Never do this. I don't like it. Then I will also become impersonal to all of them. I don't want to learn this impersonal behavior. All our picture fixed and not living is a crazy idea. 
I don't like this. Be personal, be connection, be yourself. This is the reality of life. Not give satisfaction that you are listening from mind. It will not work. It is not a philosophy. You have to drink from the ear that it goes in the heart. Then it will work. Drinking from the ears, it can go to the heart. Please try to understand. Say Gaurmani. Gurudev, thank you to remind us. Because it's not possible to see the eyes of the others and not the emotion of the others, you cannot really look in the heart of the others, actually. So... But if Guru, they come in the picture, I can see, feel it. Yes. I can see it. If they no come and they make the only picture, and they want to do other work, they will never understand. There's no interest in this. Pragmatic. They have to be personal. It's a personal business. It's not impersonal thing. You have to be personal to Rasika who is sharing you. You have to feel it, you have to connect yourself. You see all are in the in the in person picture, they're not listening. Because they are not listening. After my telling they are pictures of their go on. Srila Ramananda Roy described this to Mahaprabhu, who covered his mouth of great ecstasy. We remember this, they are talking about, is the Brahma Vilas Vivarta, which Ramananda Roy wanted to discuss with Mahaprabhu, but he said, no, 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 closed his mouth. Eto kohi apana krita gita eka gailo brema prabusva haste tara mukka achadilo tattahi gitam. Pahile raga noyan banga bhelo anidino badalo avati na gelo. Na suramana na hamramani. Na so Raman, na Raman. They forget themselves that I am a Krishna or Radha. Raman become Ramni, Ramni become Raman. Go on. Go na go. sa ramana na ham ramani duhun muna manobhava prashala jani e saki e sop prema kahini kanu tame go hobi bichura ho jani Na konjalum duti, na konjalum an, dunhu heri milan, machato panchabhan. Apsohi viraga, tunhu beli duti, zupuruka premaki, vajanariti. Chaitanya chart amita matyalila eight. Saying this, Ram Roy sang a self-made song and out of love the Lord covered his mouth with his own hand. Oh, 
first attachment appeared through the gestures of our eyes. This attachment increased and found no limit. He is not the lover and I am not the lady love. I know our minds were squashed by Cupid. Oh, Saki, this is all a love story. Tell this to Krishna. I know he has forgotten. No messenger searched for us, nor did anybody else. Cupid was our mediator. Now, during our separation, you must be our messenger. Wow. That's how it goes when you fall in love with such a nice man. Mm. So this is why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give us that, that mood, the highest mood when they both forget each other. Prema Vilas Vivarta. And we can only relish it if we are in the right body. The kinkaris or mandaris body. Otherwise not possible. So now we can understand why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving only that mandri bath. Otherwise, how it is possible for us to understand? Not, not at all. Only by the grace of Gurudev giving us this mandri body, we have the possibility to go inside. Otherwise, no possibility to understand what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving, what present. Like my experience in the past, they were all talking about the biggest uh, mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but they did not understand that he is in the mood of Radha and he himself is giving Mandri bath. No. So I didn't understand anything. Yes, I was hearing, oh, most merciful incarnation, but did I understand? No. Only by Gurudev's grace, he was open my eyes, literally. Open my eyes and see, you see, it's, it's Radharani. It's not Krishna. So only then we can understand. Otherwise, we will be blinded by blue light. <laughs> and then we cannot see the golden light. <laughs> but if we cannot get the golden aura first, we cannot even get the whole blue aura. So we need someone who give us this golden light, open our eyes, give this golden light inside, and on that base we may understand. So this is the mercy handed down to us. Well, well, 
So the next quote I found in verse 109. It is about the sweetness of Radha's wonderful form. So first let us hear the topic and then the quote. O Radhe, with the beautiful face that shines like millions of autumn moons, whose hair is braided with a jasmine garland that agitates hosts of bumblebees, whose conch-like neck is brightened by a Crivea necklace, whose soft wine-like arms are adorned with moving bangles, who wears a two-piece silken dress, and who was and who has jingling angle belts on the lotus feet. O Radhe, when will I see your wonderful form? The sweetness of Radha's wonderful form. It's about the sixth act of Vidakta Madhava play from Sri Rupa Goswami where Sri Sri Radha Madhava's hide and seek pastimes are described. In the end of this game, Shyam Sundara says, O Vilasini, there's no more need for this game that causes us to suffer separation from each other. Come, Let's blissfully take rest for a while in this Saptaparna grove that is beautified by fragrant flowers. In the same way, Shyam Sundara now takes Sri Radhika's hand and says, Come, let's take some rest in this nearby Kunja. At that moment, Sri Radhika's face blazes like millions of autumnal moons. Shyam is enchanted by this sweet, soothing luster and thinks, How beautiful is the luster of your face! He cannot find any object of comparison. But the kinkari, who knows Krishna's heart, expresses it somewhat by saying, He Sharada Koti Chantra Vadane. O you, whose face defeats millions of autumn moons and all the other addresses in this verse. So the kinkari tries to describe what Krishna himself could not. When Krishna pulled at Swamini's hand, her braid fell slightly loose out of ecstatic love. And the garland, the freshest means that the maidservant wound in it, almost fell out. How beautiful that looks! Krishna is Rasa Raj, and he is enchanted in a Rasika way, when Rasa itself 
renews the decoration that was originally made by the maidservant. Thirsty bees now come flying towards Radhika's braid. Being not only attracted to the fragrance of the Yasmin garland, but even more to Radhika's fragrant lotus-like face. When Shyama sees this, he gets a strong desire to enjoy again with Srimati and tracks her in a nearby kunj by the edge of her silken sari. Swamini resists and pulls the end of her cloth out of Shyamsundara's hands again. How sweet is her mood! Seeing this, the maidservant calls her He Patadukula Vasini, O girl who wears a two piece silken sari. This unfavorable mood gives millions of times more joy to Shyam than when he directly unites with her. Now comes the quote. E bhava yukta deki radhasya noyana sangama hoite sukha paikoti guna. Chaitanya Charit Amrita. How brightly her Cravea necklace shines on her conch shell like neck when Krishna pulls her scarf off. How sweetly her bangles are jingling. The ecstasy of the Manjuri knows no bounds when she sees this sweetness and she says He Kraiveo Chvala Kambu Kanti He Mritu Dhurvali Chalat Kankane When Shyam sees Srimati's matchless sweetness he becomes eager to enjoy with her again. So he unites with her in a nearby kunj, and the maidservants makes her eyes successful by witnessing these sweet pastimes through the arbor latticed windows. How sweetly Srimati's angle belts are jingling. Jai Jai Sri Radhe. So we heard, in comparison now, what mercy actually the scriptures, the Upanishads get, and what mercy even we fallen souls get. If we compare that, who is in a better position? Only by mercy. I did not do anything. Actually, Guru, Gurudev has to track me by the hair. Come on. No, I don't want. Come on. No, I don't want. Come on. So merciful. I didn't want. Believe me. And this is the mercy, even if you are not really able to take this mercy, you will get it. Like a baby who's given this cream from milk and, you know, how it's called, Brei it's called in German. Sometimes you have to put it in the mouth, otherwise it's... Spit it out. <laughs> like, 
Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> so in this way we are fed by Gurudev and Swamini lovingly. Till we accept the food. Till we accept the breast milk. Till we accept the mercy which is the best for us to grow and which will give full satisfaction who will give us our natural position again in our seva completely absorbed in Mahabhav. So if you have any command, want to share something, please do so. So this is already a description how Swamini is actually playing with the emotions, with the feelings of Krishna. She is giving the rhythm and the melody of the play, of the love play. And the next verse I found a quote is about Sri Radha's peak. So verse number 110. It's actually not a quote of Chaitanya Charit Amrita, but it's a quote from Chaitanya Bhagavat. Anyway, we will take it all. <laughs> so, but let us first hear the connection. Oh, Radhike, my Ishwari. When will you repeatedly ask me? How? How? With a smile that indicates your desire for Mohan and a faltering voice. As I tell you, Krishna has given up all shame and fear his family traditions, his opulence, and all moral shackles for you only. That's interesting. Not only Radharani is giving up all that Krishna also. It's an interesting point, isn't it? And Radharani is asking, how it's possible, how it's possible, how, how he did, how? Tell me more. <laughs> so in this conversation, it's about Sri Radha's peak. Oh Sri Radhe, Krishna is the jewel of Nanda Maharaj, spotless and famous dynasty, but he loves you so much that he doesn't even care if his family loses its good reputation because of his adultery with you. It's a little bit down in the commentary. It's beginning with O Sri Radhe in the half of the commentary on this page under Sri Radha's peak. O Sri Rati, Krishna is the jewel of Nanda Maharaj's spotless and famous dynasty, but he loves you so much that he doesn't even care if his family loses its good reputation because of his adultery with you. Sakinivasa 
Krishna, who lives amongst the girlfriends, has broken all moral shackles because of you. And now you are making him sad by being angry with him for no reason? The clever Kinkari calls Krishna Sakinivasa because Krishna now stays amongst the Sakis, being rejected by Radhika, and the Sakis will be very pleased when she makes up with him again. The clever Kinkari knows that Swamini is bound by the love of her girlfriends and therefore she calls Krishna Sakinivasa in this case. We see how expert seva these Kinkari's are rendering. Always the right words, always the right mood, always perfectly. Like, like last time, we also heard that uh, actually when Srila Raghunadas in his kinkri form serves Swamini by washing her feet, her hand, the whole body and so on, she actually is taking out the black hairs that Radhika does not see the black hairs. She will not have the disturbance like she will miss her beloved by seeing the blackish blue hairs. But one moment later she is showing to a picture where Krishna's picture is hanging and is showing here, here is your beloved. So expertly, first don't remind her to go in the right direction of reminding. Special lila, special mood. And the kinkari knows exactly what kind of, in which moment. This is Bhavula Srati. Always connected, always in the behalf of Radharani. The Kinkari can read the heart. So if we connected with Radharani's heart, what can happen to you? Only Mahabhav can happen to you and more Mahabhav and more and more and you will get mad like our Swamini. So let it be. Here it must be noticed that all of Sri Krishna's innumerable qualities, the quality of love for his devotees, is the greatest. Subdued by the love of his devotees, he will commit acts that are popularly considered horrible. And in this his love for his devotees is shown to the utmost. That's a nice description mentioned here by Ananda Das Babaji. Because who is the most highest devotee? Our sweet Radha. So he will show it to the utmost for Radharani. So his popularly uh, seen acts, they should be horrible. Like abandon his whole family, don't care about anything. He has to always care about that, isn't it? But now he 
just abandon it. For whom he will do that? Only for our Swamini. And that shows the position of Radharani. What will Krishna not do and say for his devotees? For his devotee he killed Bali in Sukriva's place. For his devotee Krishna swallowed the forest fire. Thus he voluntarily becomes his devotee's servant. And this is written in Chaitanya Bhagavat. When Braud Radhika hears from her maidservant how Krishna is subdued by her love, she strongly desires him again and gives up her Braud Huff. A butt-like smile sprouts on her mouth. And with a faltering voice of desire, she asked the mandri, How is that? How is that? Wanting to hear from her again and again. How Krishna has given up all shackles for her. There is no end to her thirst for hearing about Krishna's qualities and the clever maidservant draws a sweet picture of Krishna's sweet attributes on the slate of Radhika's heart like an expert artist girl. Srila Raghunadas Goswami says, Krishna nama yasa shrava va tang sholasi karnikam. Krishna's names, attributes and fame are decorating or decorations for Radhika's ears. So here we can see how eager she is to hear that. Krishna has given up everything for her. Again and again she wants to hear. And this is the seva of the manjari, to again and again give the glorification of this behavior for her. This is like nectar for Radharani to hear that Krishna has given up everything for her, only for her. And in this way, the Manjari expertly is bringing down slowly the peak of Swamini. And so they will meet again. So if anybody has some commentary on this, maybe Gurudev, if you want to enlighten us a bit more on that. Radhe, very nice. You do very nice. Hello. Yes, we hear you. Good, I want to listen to you. So the next verse, I found a quote from Chaitanya Charit Amrita is verse number 112. It's about the delicious, beautiful lotus feet of Swamini.
Aho, the master of relishes, who is fond of playing with the breasts of his adolescent lady loves in the Nikunja, appears in Brindavan, experiencing the act of offering obeisances to his girlfriends to be like a festival and carrying the lotus feet of his beloved on his head. May he mercifully give me a blaze at these delicious lotus feet too. That's an amazing verse, isn't it? Because this shows that even Krishna is always eager to find a nice place at Sri Radharani's lotus feet. Put them on his head. Bow down before her. And showing us in this way also our place. So, if we go on in this uh, purport here, on the next side, we will start here with Sri Sri Radha Madhava. Sri Sri Radha Madhava are enjoying their pastimes in an arbor in the company of the girlfriends. Shlichyati Kamapi Kumbhati Kam Api Gita Govinda Krishna kisses one girl and embraces another one. The Kinkaris stay with Swamini like her shadow. This shows the nature of Krishna and the nature of a Kinkari. So although they actually want to take shelter at the same place, Radharani's lotus feet, their natures are different. Krishna is unsteady. The kinkaris are steady, completely fixed on one goal. Always serve their beloved Radharani. After enjoying Radhika's submissive mood, Dakshinyaras, Madhava now wants to relish the sweetness of her unsubmissive mood, Vamasvabhav. After all, he is Rasika Shaker, the master relisher. Here comes the quote. Briya yadi mana kore koroye bharsana veta stuti hoite hare se mora mon. Chaitana Charit Amrita. When my beloved is angry with me and rebukes me, that takes my mind away from the reverential braces the Vedas offer me. That is his own realization. Sri Krishna's mastership in relishing mellows is fully manifest when he is with Sri Radha and the gopis. For in the presence of such associates, Sri Krishna's forms and qualities appear in a special way. Srila Chiva Goswami confirms this in his Durgama Sangamani Tik of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1.11. In the Bhagavat 10, Chapter 60, 
It is seen that Krishna choked with his principal queen Rukmini in Tvaraka to relish the sweetness of her man. But Rukmini was not such in such a playful mood. She took Krishna's choke seriously and fainted and fearfully fell to the ground like a banana tree knocked over by the wind. The Braja Sundaris, though, press Krishna by making him relish flavors that he himself couldn't even have imagined. Again, the Braja Sundaris, though, bless Krishna by making him relish flavors that he himself couldn't even have imagined. That's a clear description of the nature of our Swamini. Only Radharani can give him relishment that he could never, ever imagine. Only she can really give him the topmost relish so that he not only forget that he is God and all his duties and you know all these things, not, not only that, that's just a little part of it. He forgets himself completely, even as the king of relishes, he forgets everything about himself. He forgets himself completely. Prema Vilas Vivarta. They both forget their own identity. And this is the topmost. So we can understand this is only possible in Vrindavan only through the mercy of Radharani. No other place, no other girl can do that with him like Radha. That's why he is taking shelter of her lotus feet. And that's why we are doing it as he. We also take shelter there. Although, we are in another mood. Steady, want to serve only Radharani. So the next quote I found is in verse number 113, the next verse. And here the basic topic is Sri Radha in the sweet and beautiful Rasa festival. When will our Queen Radha, who is adorned by her girlfriends with various excellent ornaments, a splendid two-piece dress, tilak, perfumes and garlands, and who is herself expert in all arts, when will this our Queen Radha enter the indescribably sweet and beautiful festival of the Rasa dance? So the Kinkri is waiting when? So many times this when is said at the beginning of a verse. It is not a question that. It is just a question when. And this shows Rati. Because Rati is completely based on hope. 
on firm, firm hope. It's not a question that it will happen, no, no. This is not a question, it's just a question, when? When will I be there? When can I see? When will my Swamini be with me? When will I be, we, be with her? When? Not if. Forget about this if. It's only a question, when? Sooner or later, but for sure. So when will our Queen Radha, our Queen, not Queen because we are in Aishwarya, no, our Queen because she is the Queen of Mahabharata. And we know that. That's why she is a queen. And when will she enter the indescribably sweet and beautiful festival of the Rasalands? When will this Rasalands be so indescribably sweet? In that moment when Radharani is entering that Rasalands. Then it is like that. Before it was sweet, yes. Before it was also very uh, transcendental, indescribably sweet. But now it gets most indescribably sweet. Because Radharani is coming and even Krishna waits for her. No rasa dance without our Swamini. It is nightfall and the full moon is rising in the sky. Suddenly, Sham's enchanting flute song becomes audible and the Brachasundaris, becoming attracted to it, rush out of their houses to meet him. Shyam sings Radha's name through his flute. Shyam sings Radha's name through his flute. Although he invites all the gopis for a nocturnal tryst. He specially calls Raseshwari Radhika, the queen of the Rasa lands. Tahavina Rasalila Nahi Boychite Chaitanya Charit Amrita. Without her, he does not like the Rasa lands. Without her, he does not like the Rasa dance. Without her, he does not like the Rasa dance. He especially calls Raseshwari Radhika with his flute. His flute is chanting Radha, Radha, Radha. Come, my dear. Bracha Sundari For Krishna, there is only one real Bracha Sundari. The name is vibrated by his flute.
So now we can see the extraordinary position of our Swamini. Krishna is falling to her feet. Krishna is waiting for her to come to the Rasa dance. Without her, he doesn't like the Rasa dance. Without her, he doesn't like anything. This is the fact. We always, knowingly or unknowingly, are giving Radharani to him in different forms. Do we not offer all foods with Tulsi on it? Bhakti Shakti? Part of whom? Which Shakti? If we go deep in this and consider all the Shaktis, where they are coming from and where they are going to, and we will find that the source always is one person. So without Radha, there is no Bhakti, no real Bhakti. Because Bhakti Shakti is coming from her. And in the case of Ch Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Panchatattva, we can see that also. Gadata, Pandit, Brahma Shakti. And who is standing on the side of Gadata? Srivas. In this case, praying to Radharani, getting the Brahma Shakti distributing it, showing what to do to serve that Radha. This is the mercy of Radharani everywhere in all aspects. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Panchatattva, is showing us so clearly in all aspects. Gurudev was giving this meditation. I remember when he was in my house. It was long ago, but he was seeing this Panchatattva picture and he said, Oh, please bring. And then he explained. And he was opening the eyes of the people who were there explaining Panchatattva in a completely different way like usually we heard before. So it's a nice point to meditate on. What aspects are in this Panchatattva? For me it's like Radharani is spreading the arms and saying, come, come home. Like this, because Everything you need to go home is there. It's like a loving embrace and saying, come on, come home. Do your real seva, get your real position. That's the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Without him, we were lost, lost. Completely lost. Krishna was there before, isn't it? He was there. He gave what he could give. But look, who was following which part? What happened? 
5,000 years ago, now it's more than 5,000 years ago, he was there. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has to come. Radharani had to come. Radharani in her loving mood, spreading the arms and say, Come, come my child, come home, come to my breast. Otherwise, we would be lost. Lost in space, lost in Kali Yuga. So no wonder that Chaitanya Charit Amrita quotes are everywhere in all different kinds of books which are important for the path of Raga Bhakti. Because they are actually the fundament. They are giving us the basic understanding what kind of mercy we got and how to follow that path how to come in our Swarup, to fix completely in Swarupa Vesh, serve with our Bhava Deha. It's a Bhava Deha, it's not a Kyana Deha. It's a Bhava Deha, a body made of spiritual transcendental emotions, not of Kyan. It's not a Kyana Deha, it's a Bhava Deha. So if you have, a, let's say you have a battery and you can load it up again. You know, sometimes you have batteries and you can load them up again. When they are low, you load them up again. You need the right connection, let's say 1.5 voltage. You have to load it in the right station, isn't it? Right connection. So, Swamini is giving us this power. We are lost of all these powers, but we can get it from the right station. So put this Bhava Deha into the upload station of Maha Bhavini and then you will be full of her mercy. And then again and again we put ourselves in this loading up stations, which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left for us, like Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, like Vilap Kusumanjali, and all these kind of scriptures in the connection with our Bhav. And with the mercy of Gurudev, who is giving the right voltage, not 220 or 230, on a 1.2 voltage, it would explode. He's transforming it in the right voltage and giving. So let us load up again and again in this connection here, hearing about Shrishiradara Sudhanidi Chaitanya Charitamrita and Vilap Kusumanjali. I think these are the basic scriptures we need. Radhe Radhe Gauravani. Jai Shri Radhe Rasashwari. Uh, thank you for your words. It's touching me very deep and uh, I want to share something and maybe I'm totally wrong. <laughs> um from the point you shared about the game, the hike and seek game, and Krishna said, let's stop and make a pause and go to another kunj. In this moment, I felt um, 
a loving feeling in my heart like an arrow <laughs> and uh and I want to to understand my heart and then I thought maybe it's because I had the feeling that she is really happy that he made this I told her this idea because she can make a pause and he is full of compassion to her for her to, uh, is caring for her because these hike and seek games um, maybe are not so easy for her, for her feet and for her soft body. This was the first I saw it, and maybe this is his way to show her his love, and this touches me. And then, and then I thought, is this correct? Maybe he does this for his own pleasure. Um, but normally hike and seek is a part is something like separation and meeting and gives both more more love intense and to say to her uh let's make a pause no i don't not understand this is the one point i'm still <laughs> feeling and thinking about and the other point is what came to me at the end when you talk about Mahaprabhu. Krishna came to make these experiences of full love of this Mahabhav and his family. And I thought about, is it possible or did he integrate all his loving experience as Mahaprabhu in, in his Krishna form, in Mohan's form? So, or is it totally different? So maybe after Mahaprabhu's experience, Radha Mohan, or Mohan experience more love. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a little bit confused, <laughs> um, but I'm really happy that we talk about this and you wonderful sharing. So my heart is really, yeah, um, aufgemischt. <laughs> Can you? clear this a little bit or maybe Guru Dev can help. Guru Dev is just eating. I see that he's taking prasad. Uh, I so. don't see. Okay. Um, it's Raman. They are in Raman. So your question was if Krishna is doing this, is doing is he doing for him or well, if you are completely connected with a person, can you really make a decision if it's for you or for him or for her? No, you're lost in Brema. You're completely lost. You're doing it out of Brema for the beloved. There's no question I'm doing it for me. This wouldn't be this would be a contradiction actually because Brahma doesn't want to have something for himself and even though Krishna is the enjoyer you may say yeah but he should do for him but he is the enjoyer means he's accepting the seva which is brought in that mood I don't want to have anything for me I want that you are happy so I'm giving to you and Krishna mercifully is taking all these offerings. Although he's only interested in Radharani's offerings to him because she is giving the highest form of Mahabhav. So he's only interested in that, but out of mercy he is accepting all the other offerings which are given in Mahabhav. So there's no question of selfishness or like that. I mean, I know you, you didn't meant it like that, but you also understand what I want to say. So they are in Raman. There's both of their feelings. So Krishna is, of course, also fulfilling his wishes, why he came. But this is just a side aspect in that moment when he is in Radharani's mood here. Because the first is that he is giving that mandri bath to everyone. 
completely in ecstasy, completely in madness, lost, like you are feeling. That's why you feel it in the heart. That's good. You feel what actually they are giving. They are lost, completely lost. Maybe that's why you feel like this. They lost themselves in love and want to give us this feeling also. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's gift. This is actually that special gift. Not only Ujjvalaras, Unat. It was never there before. Unat Ujjvalaras. I hope that is answering your question a little bit. And Gurudev finished Prasad, maybe he also wants to share on that. We cannot hear you, Gurudev, now. I don't listen the whole subject. So you are explaining is very nice. Yeah. <laughs> It's for you. It's it's clear or you want to ask again something, then you can now ask Gurudev directly. Thank you very much. I think it's not the point of clearness. I think it's a point to go deeper in these feelings. Uh, but you helped me a lot. Um, and yes, I can think or feel what, what, touched it, what touched my heart so deeply when you told about this Leela. It was Wonderful. And uh, the second question was, all this experience Mahaprabhu made when he came to, to feel this love and um, did he integrate it or does this something, it, it, it changed for us the whole world as devotees and does it change something for Krishna or Mohan, who is in Munga Mandir. Um, I know maybe this is a, a really stupid question, but I, I think about, I thought maybe, yes, since Mahaprabhu was here, it, it has an influence, maybe. I don't know. Is it like this, Gurudev? Or Gauravani? This Gurudev has to answer. I don't know. <laughs> If it has an influence in uh, Mungya Mandir at that time. Mohan especially, because he made the experience he never had before as Krishna. Gurudev is just in some exchange there. So, of course, Radharani is always influencing all bhavas and making them higher and higher and higher and higher to the utmost. So, of course, Radharani is ex uh, um, Radharani's Oh, you say, I lost the word. So that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was there, he is representing the mood of Radha. So of course that changed everything. In any case. And even though I know that a lot of people in Vrindavan, they wanted to cover that still, it's not possible today. It's breaking out everywhere. Radharani's fame is spreading now everywhere, openly. It is discussed even on YouTube, everywhere, worldwide. It's done. It's not anymore coverable. Because Radharani's influence is so strong, there is no energy strong enough 
to cover that. So I guess it has an influence on everything and everybody. And of course, a very positive, how it could be in another way. So Radharani is changing everything, our hearts and, of course, the heart of Mohan also, always. She is playing with that heart. Whenever she is just moving slightly, the heart of Mohan is moving with her. It is never, ever disconnected. And there is an example given that a hook is inside the heart of Mohan. And when Radharani is moving her eyes, this hook is moved also. It's a very clear picture, isn't it? If you are going to fish with the hook, you put in the heart and you move your eyes and in this moment everything is moving. The heart of Mohan is moving with the movements of Radha. So Krishna has no independent existence because of Madanakya Mahabhav of Radharani. And Gurudev so many times say, we want to be independent. But even Krishna is giving up his independent nature and he is the most independent person. There is no one more independent than him. But even he, out of love, out of the love of Radharani, this is actually the point, because of her love, he is giving up his independence. Only our Swamini can do that. So lucky we are to give up. Um. Guru, if I didn't understand, can you please again? We cannot hear. Hello, Prabhupada mentioned in last paragraph of Bhagavad Gita. Read that Bhagavad Gita. Last, uh, last chapter of last paragraph. Is the nature of the soul to be independent because it's a part and partial of Krishna? But he become independent in the shelter of Krishna, in the normal position of Radhika, then he become normal. If he independent, his bodily identification is abnormal. Normal means we are even not nor not normal. If we not take the shelter of Radhika, we are abnormal. See the Prabhupada's last paragraph of last slow. Yes. Huh? He is writing with other words, the living entity is in between the both energies from the Lord because it depends to the higher energy and has a little bit of independence. And when he uses this independence in the right way, then it comes under the direct, under the direct uh, Führung, what is called, uh, guidance. guidance. Under the direct guidance of Krishna. And in this way, 
he will find his natural position in in Ladini Shakti. If not, then he is not natural. He will talk unnatural. He is unnatural person. <laughs> he is an ego, unnatural. So we want to be under the guidance of Radharani in our natural position. Jai Gurudev. Then he come to the natural place. If not, it's unnatural. See, read again and explain. So, in this connection, we can say that Krishna is like the sun, the sunshine, the sun. And the living entity is like the sunshine, part and particle. Because the living entities are from the marginal, marginal energy from Krishna. That's why they want to be independent. They can be in the material energy or in the spiritual energy. This is the independence. Tatashta Shakti. Like Gurudev gave this example, there is the land and there is the water. And we are in between. We can go on land or we can go in the water. It depends on our will. This is our independence. We can be in the material world or in the spiritual, as we like. And because we are from Krishna, from his energy, he is the sun, the source of all living entities, and we are sparks, part and parcels of him. That's why we have the same nature. So, if we use this independence in the right way to go in our spiritual body and serve Radharani, if we do that, then we will be under the direct guidance of Ladini Shakti, our Radharani. If we use it in the right way, if we don't use it in the right way, we will not be in our natural position, which is under the guidance directly from Radha. This is our natural position, but if we don't use it like that, it will be under the guidance of the three modes of nature and Maya. That's our freedom. We can use it as we like. Or we can stay independent. One day this, and one day that. One day very spiritual, and one day very material. Everything is possible. But we will be not in our original, natural position. So this is what Prabhupada is describing here. I'm sorry, I cannot say it directly in English because I only have a German Bhagavad Gita, so I try to translate it. So, Gurudev, you want to add something, maybe, or correct me? All good. I say we cannot be natural without taking shelter of Radhika. 
This is Prabhupada. Final subject. We are will be unnatural. We will do unnatural practice. We will never reach the goal without taking shelter of Radhika. We will never become normal. We will never leave crazy ideas. <laughs> 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 that is the point. <laughs> yes, you made a very good point because usually we think that the crazy ideas will not leave us, but actually it's vice versa. We don't leave them. Um, that is the point. <laughs> because we want to be crazy. Yes. <laughs> we want to be independent. We want freedom to become male, to enjoy it. Craziness, all craziness comes with this, without taking, not shelter of Prabhupada's last life, this is Bhagavad And we do many things. What is nothing to do uh, is useful for his spiritual life. Because we don't want to take shelter. We want to be independent. We not listen even Krishna, not listen our Guru. I not say my words, I say Prabhupada's words. <laughs> Yes, that's true, Gurudev. I want to remember that actually we all have this mind behavior gap. We want something theoretically, but we don't behave like it yet. And in between is this gap, and this is the way we have to go and stick on it. We have to stick on our goal, even if it is a gap. Sometimes it feels like you fall down. You have to stick on your goal. But still I want, still I want. I'm not able, but still I want. I'm not able to do it, but still I want. I want to have this goal in my life. I want to have this seva of Radha. So we have to stick it, stick on it. And then we will come over that gap. So it's just a normal process. We don't have to feel hopeless. Because mercy is always with us. Like Gurudev is giving us mercy now, he's always with us. He's never closing the door for us. Always open, isn't it? That's mercy. It's a 24-7 job, if you see it from that point. Of course, for him it's seva. It's seva for Radharani. But he is 24-7 here for us. Thank you for that, Gurudev. To always be with us, always be mercifully here. And even though we don't respect you in the right way and we are like little children doing so many mistakes. We, we are always independent in my body consciousness. That is my condition. Because we are independent. Independent. and not need shelter, <laughs> because we not take shelter of Pratika. The moment it will be shelter, all will be constructed here, and we will become normal. It's all wasting my time if I don't want to do this. It's better to live a spiritual life and do the material. No meaning.
The moment we take this, our life is done. We not take it, our life is tr giving trouble to myself. We create trouble for us. Jai Shirate, so we have to sign. <laughs> sign. <laughs> sign. <laughs> Krishna is not a goal. He's a way of progress. She ten ten. He's a way of progress, not a goal. We ten ten. Prabhupada. My progress can be growth, but we are progress. Te shamsatata yuktanam pachatam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam yena mamu payanti te. The ones who serving me in any moment with love, then I will give the understanding with which they can come to me. So serving with love gives the understanding how to come there. And this is actually the logic of love, isn't it? If your child has no love for you, why it should come to you? It should stay in the kindergarten or in the playroom. But if in the moment, with love, the child is crying out, Mama! The mama will be there immediately showing the way to the kitchen where she is cooking or doing something like that, isn't it? If there's no interest from the side of the kid, why it should be shown the way? So we have to have this interest, we want. We don't know how, but we know that we want. That's it, we don't have to know how. We just have to know, yes, I want. So, Time is over. Thank you very much for your patience and your mercy. And Gurudev, thank you very much for your input, your mercy, your love. I don't hear you, Gurudev, sorry. Hello, there's nice the way of progress. Read again, I want to just. Um, Gurudev wanted that you continue reading. Sorry, yeah. the mic was off. Krishna is the way of progress. Then, then. Yes. The ones who are serving me always with love, I give the understanding how they can get to me, how they can come to me. Go on. In this verse, the word Buddha Yoga is very, uh, I say, <laughs> very important. Buddha Yoga means mind is fixed with love. Yeah. Yeah. Buddhi Yoga is very important here. 
So from the second uh, chapter, we remind that Arjuna said, so many things were said and now he will get instructions in Buddhi Yoga. And now Buddhi Yoga will be explained. Buddhi Yoga means to act in Krishna consciousness. This is the highest intelligence. Buddhi means intelligence. And Yoga means mystical uh, activities or mystical crow of the self. Soul can see the super soul. This is mystic. To know in soul consciousness. This is mystic. Go on. If someone tries to go home to God and is giving himself into the process of Krishna consciousness, then his activities are called Buddhi Yoga. With other words, Buddhi Yoga is the process by which one can get free of the entanglement in the material world. Soul consciousness coming. Yoga cannot be a long distance call. When I am not identifying soul, I cannot get it. Go on. The highest goal from all these steps is Krishna. Because man doesn't know what it means to be with God conscious or with uh, Bhakti Yoga people and with a uh, real spiritual master and its significance, one should see that the goal is Krishna. And as soon as this goal is fixed, one can go this path relaxed, but for sure, step by step. And then will reach the goal. No, no, no. No, no, you are talking wrong. Read the English version. I have the English version here. Yeah, maybe you can read the English version because I only have the German version and my English is not so... Listen this. I should read only this. Yeah. One should know that the goal is Krishna. And when the goal is assigned, then the path is slowly but progressively, progressively transversed and the ultimate goal is achieved. Uh, goal. Yeah. When a person knows that the goal of life but is addicted to the fruits of achievements, he is acting in karma yoga. No, no, no. No? <coughs> Where are you reading? <laughs> ten, ten. Where is this? Underline is there. Yes, this I read. Underline this. Read again. Okay, only what is underlined I read. Underline, read, no? <laughs> <coughs> when one tries to go back home, back to Godhead, and takes fully to Krishna consciousness in devotional service, his action is called Buddhi Yoga. In other words, Buddhi Yoga is process by which one gets what out of the entanglement of material world. The ultimate goal in, of progress is Krishna. This and this is what I read. Progress is Krishna. 
and understand the ultimate okay re the re ultimate goal of progress is progress krishna is not goal ultimate progress yes is krishna my progress only with krishna with the soul and super soul ultimate goal progress only by krishna because the soul cannot understand is a progress he make progress to us is not goal is a progress way krishna is a giving progress by this practice that we can fix in my soul read again this line the this uh, okay the ultimate goal of progress the is ultimate goal of progress is krishna yeah. that is my point goal is not krishna ultimate goal of progress is krishna means this is not a goal this is the path to walk Go on. People do not know this. Therefore, the association of devotees and a bona fide spiritual master are important. Bona fide spiritual master is not who say that he is not a goal. He is a path. He is a progress path. Is this? Go on. One should know that the goal. is krishna and when the goal is a sign then the path is slowly a sign means you agree that krishna is the super source a sign is no nobody a sign is so no fixed in so consciousness and go on then the path is slowly but progressively transverse and the ultimate goal is achieved achieved that the point understand this is the meaning german is not right to explain rightly understand i yes. don't understand yes i do is a way of the progress krishna is the way of progress wasting your time with krishna <laughs> sign it not signing is the not progress blocking myself you block because of not believing in the soul you stop it this is the blockage hum to kha chuke beta subah nashta kar lenge bas us ko nashta kar lenge wo log ko khila dena <laughs> Understand? So the goal is Mahabhav Chintamani. Ultimate, ultimate goal. This is to achieve. Understand? Thank you. Try to read more, and as I and try to understand, where a progress is Krishna. Assign it. Believe me. Sign me. You don't doubt it. If you want to be in soul, He will help you to bring in soul consciousness. This is the progress. But we need with the bona fide spiritual master slow and steady ultimate ultimate goal higher goal Sri Radha, thank you.
if you understand. <laughs> Prabhupada, not I, but my words. Gurudev, you make us understand the words of Prabhupada. Because Prabhupada words. But you don't make us understand. Say, Prabhupada is telling this. We are wasting our time because we are not signed, only talking about Krishna. Because still I have a doubt. And still Are I have to gather information. If you um, sign and contract and make the one flat, you talk about flat. No. You never talk about flat. You live in the flat, you pay the money and live in that. You have to follow that contract. You don't talk about others about flat. So you have, why you talk about Krishna? Because you know sign it. <laughs> Who talk about Krishna, they no sign it. I never did them. Yes, they go slow, but the study progress. Ultimate goal. Real goal, what is for spiritual life? Sarup and Sarup Siddhi. Page 4, Prabhupada mentioned that, that we practice. Yes. Yes? Thank you, Gurudev. That's fine. I show you last uh, chapter, last words of Prabhupada, 10, 10 and 4, page Gurudev. 4.